Oh my goodness. Hi friends. How are we doing today? Don't mind the tattoo and the thing on it. That's making it look super ugly. I did it to myself last night because I need to feel something. And I'm trying to be more spontaneous and have less, less a fear of like a lack of control and plan in my life. And so putting ink on my skin permanently seems to be a good idea to me. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having a good time. If you are coming back here to hang out with me again, did you know? that I love you. Did you know that you mean so much to me? If you are new here, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Paige Leal. I am an autistic human being. And so over here, we talk about autism and stuff. Woo -woo. It's a party, we have a good time. You may know me from TikTok. If you're not doing so already, feel free to go check out my TikTok at Paige Leal. And while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. Almost two years ago in March of 2020, right when the world kind of started um, going sideways, I made a few funky uh, little videos and those videos ended up kickstarting my online career. Career. I made a series of videos about autism in girls and the first one part one got over a million likes in 24 hours you haven't seen it here you go autism in girls part one when doctors were studying autism they only studied males this makes it harder for anyone else to be diagnosed because everything is based off the male brain this sucks <laughs> Girls usually end up showing different traits than guys do, which is why it can take us years to get diagnosed. I was 15 when I got diagnosed and that's considered early for a girl. I have a guy friend who's autistic and he was two when he got diagnosed. A main reason as to why girls are so late to get diagnosed is because we are particularly good at one thing that guys are not so good at when it comes to autism. And this is something we call masking. Masking is basically just being like a really good actor. It's where you take traits that everyone else is showing and start portraying them as yourself. It's like a lot of copying going on. But in your mind, you don't think you're copying. You think that this is normal and everyone feels the same way that you do. You basically feel like an alien and you're really good at hiding that, which is why I don't seem autistic. This sucks. <laughs> Honestly, I love her so much. What a, what a sweet gal. Just a little baby. She had more of a drive, that woman, than I do now of making sure that people are right. Two and a half million followers later, I've learned that I cannot tr control people. I cannot change their minds no matter how much I would like to. I can give people all of the facts in the world and they will still be idiots. But I figured, dudes, let us elaborate on that infamous video of mine. <laughs> and today I wanna to talk to you about 10 things that are common autistic traits in women. Let's keep this conversation going, you know? Let's get more girls diagnosed with autism. That is, of course, girls that are autistic. <laughs> but hold on, before we get into the rest of this video, please listen to a kind word from our lovely sponsor of the day, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like you and I. You all know I'm a huge fan of learning new things or old things with new tips and tricks. I love drawing, doodling. I'm an avid bullet journaler. And I also have Procreate where I draw a lot of things for my journal, posters, stickers, and now tattoos. I took the course Digital Illustration Learn to Use Procreate by Jerome Vogel. And that's where I now learn to create things like this. Skillshare also has no app. Whether it takes you a month, a week, or an hour to learn a new skill, there is something for everyone on Skillshare. Or perhaps you've already mastered a skill and you just want to learn some new techniques. You can do it all on Skillshare. Join live classes and experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while working alongside other members. Or join an existing class and learn on your own way. The first 1,000 subscribers who click the link down there, down below, right there, in the description box, are going to receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And now on to the video. Thank you so much, Past Page, for that um, brilliant infomercial. Alrighty, so autism trait number one, and that is mimicking others. This is part of the whole masking experience. And actually a lot of these are. It's not uncommon for autistic women to mask. And if you're not sure what masking is, please look up in the eye and there will be a video there for you. But when a human being is doing something, you know if you copy them, you also look like a human being. Not only is it part of fitting in, feeling like you belong, feeling like you are also a human person, you feel like you're doing something right, and you also feel like there's one thing that you don't need to make a decision on. That's one way that you can decrease your stress. What am I doing? Am I doing this right? And how, how does one be a human? Well, I'll just watch that girl over there. She seems to be having an okay time. If I do what she does, 
I will be all right. Mimicking others can also start the snowball effect, which is being very rigid in routines, which isn't a number out of my 10, but thought I'd add it in there as kind of a, a 1A, if you will. <laughs> Sometimes you can see something that someone else is doing and categorize it in your brain as that's how people do it in general. And that can be about anything. You see the way someone looks, someone talks, someone does an activity, how they move, how they walk how they raise their hand in class. And by watching others and analyzing others, you can start to make rules of how to be a human person. And these rules may be the rules that you think you have to use your whole life. You may speak a certain way because you watch someone else speak this way. That is probably the right way to speak. Now this is how you speak. These things can be very hard to undo. When I was diagnosed with autism at the age of 15, I went through a huge identity crisis because I realized that I was a shell of a human person. I did not have my own personality. I could only name one thing that I was sure of of myself, and that was that I like children. <laughs> Mimicking others kind of goes into our second point, and that is that autistic women are often very creative. With a caveat here though, we can have wild imaginations and be exceptionally good at arts and crafts and DIY things, singing, songwriting, playing an instrument. And a lot of us really excel in just the creative arts or being a creative person in general. But a lot of the time we are creative in ways that have structure or in ways that already exist, in ways that have rules. For example, I cannot come up with anything new. All I can come up with are things that I've already seen. So when it comes to drawing, painting, I cannot make up a new picture in my head. I must copy one that's already there. As a child, I did not draw new pictures. I like to follow color by numbers. I learned how to make a paper crane and then I made thousands of them. Rules, steps, structure, done. Do a creative thing, but in a way that is not creative. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and how does this relate to mimicking others? My favorite way of being creative was acting. I got into acting at age six and I've been acting ever since. How this started was I would memorize entire movies. The whole thing, the whole thing. Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus was my savior. I had this little tent that had Barbie and the Magic of Pegasus on it and I would hide behind the tent and I would recite the entire movie to my parents and their friends and whoever was there and I did it multiple times and I made them sit there and watch me. And that's me being creative. I had dolls, loved dolls, love uh, doll things, but they only did things that they would do in real life. They only wore things that they came with that belonged to them. Someone would try to join in and they would do something that was not correct. And I would say, no, no, nay, nay, please put that down. That is not how she speaks. That is not where she sits. She sits in this chair. I saw that in a movie. I like to do funky things with my hair. Everything I've ever done with my hair is something that I've seen somewhere else. Even if I try to do something new creatively, I don't think that it works ever. Even if to other people they think, wow, that looks really good. I like that thing a lot. No, lies. I haven't seen it before. No one else has done it. Therefore, it's probably not a thing that human beings do and it probably looks stupid. I love creative writing, love creative writing. Have I ever written something new? Probably not. Maybe the only creative thing that I do that's from my own head is poetry, but that's just thoughts. That's just thoughts in words. It's not that creative. Even when I tattoo myself, I use a stencil. That's already existed out there. Or if I want to make a new stencil, I put together things that already exist. It's all just pieces of things that already exist. And those pieces I probably drew myself but I drew them off of something else that already exists. My imagination, wild. Don't think there's one thing in there that I made up myself. Everything I've seen, I've read, I've heard about, and I have a photographic memory, and so there's a lot of stuff going on, and it's also all in pictures, all the time. Do you know a girl is very creative in a very strict way? There's a good chance they could be autistic. Number three, the most common careers for autistic women fall into a few categories. The first one is caring for people, nurses, teachers, doctors, veterinarians, babysitters, PSWs, daycare workers. The next category is teaching, all different kinds of teaching, depending on what they're interested in. And the third category is music, playing an instrument, being a singer, songwriter, other creative things like dancing, acting, theater, the performing arts in general, which blows my mind because those are my three favorite things. <laughs> Number four, autistic girls often have exceptionalities. They often excel at certain areas of their life. They can have a genius intelligence, perfect pitch. Maybe they're hyperlexic. Maybe they have the most fantastic memory you've ever seen. A lot of autistic girls are better than most people at a few things. Number five, my all time favorite. It's known that autistic people can struggle with making eye contact. This is because eye contact sucks. <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense. But as a result of autistic women often having to mask, that can result in intense forced eye contact. I was one of those children. And look at the size of my eyes. You think that this helped? 
Anyone at all? No. I was like, this is what talking to people is like. I stare into their soul and I don't blink because I also don't feel any part of my body. And so do I need to blink? No, I'll just stare at you. Can I hear one word you're saying? No. I couldn't tell you how many times I was talking to someone or listening to them talk and they did this. And I'm like, what was that about? <laughs> they just thought that I was purposely like opening my eyes really wide. I just have really big eyes. And as a public speaker, eye contact was very important. And when I heard that one time, that was a rule of how to be a human being that I mimicked for about 18 years. Often, if I am interested romantically in somebody, I find myself doing this to them as well. So if you ever thought, does Paige have a crush on me? How am I looking at you? Am I looking at you? And am I looking at you like this? There's a tip and trick on how you know if I am attracted to you. That felt way too familiar. <laughs> Number six, just like most and probably all autistic people, because it's one of the criteria, struggling with nonverbal communication is another autistic women trait. Not understanding the meaning and concept behind body language, facial expressions, tone of voice. And this goes not only understanding it in other people, but also within yourself. Having seemingly inappropriate facial expressions, bad posture, <laughs> weird eye contact. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. When things aren't direct, we're not, we're, we don't get it. We don't get it. And don't make us. I was told a lot in my life that I always assume things. Why do you always assume things? That is because I learned that I need to. That there are things that people are not telling me all the time, all of the time, that they think that I need to know. And so I make assumptions and 99% of the time I was wrong. And then people got mad at me for making false assumptions. And then I was stressed in myself because why did I do that? What information gave me that idea? Also, why didn't you just tell me things? Also, are there things that you're trying to get through to me that I just don't get? Am I weird? Like, how do you read other people's minds? And and why is are people reading my mind right now? How do they do that? But this can also be quite dangerous. To get a little bit personal here, I cannot tell you how many situations I've been in where I was with somebody speaking to them and they decided that it was time to kiss me or try to be, you know, sexually involved with me in some way. I didn't see it coming. I didn't verbally consent, nor did they verbally ask for consent. If they would have, I would have said no, but I must have had body language or facial expressions or eye contact or something that gave them the go ahead in their head. And then I also couldn't tell you how many times that happened and I just allowed it to because I figured that I must have warranted, you know, some kind of response that made them think that this was something that I wanted. And as a chronic people pleaser, I thought that's my fault. This is my punishment. This is your reward. This is what happens. And these are the consequences of my own actions. In all fairness, no one did anything wrong. And now, thankfully, if ever put in that situation again, I know enough to know that I can say no and I can go away and it does not matter if they are upset with me or not. People's emotions are not my responsibility nor my problem. So please look out for that in your girls. Save them, save them the trauma later on. Number seven, autistic girls are often highly sensitive. Sensitive, crybaby, drama queen, annoying, ha. Huh. These were all words that I was called my whole life. There was not a day in school I think where I did not cry. A lot of things upset me that didn't upset other people. I was stressed a lot more frequently, which led to anxiety attacks, which led to crying. And also when you live in a world that was not built for you where people are communicating in ways that you are not getting everything is hard everything is frustrating you are wrong and stupid you feel 99% of the time why are things harder for you than other people why do you feel like an alien why is everyone else just getting this whole life thing and you're not why can I hear the electricity and why is it bothering me so much and no one else why am I having such a hard time making friends why am I so stressed about the way I look, the way I talk, the way I present myself, the way that I'm communicating with other people. Why do I have to think so much more than everyone else? That can cause a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of being sad about things, being frustrated more easily, being quicker to anger. But also we feel good emotions also so much more. And sometimes that's for things that don't make sense to other people as well. The other day I found a song on my phone and I started playing it and it was the intro to an anime from a while ago. And I was so happy. I was crying and I was stimming and I was dancing and it, for the entirety of the song, I was doing something else, but I couldn't continue doing the thing because it just made me so happy. And that's something that people don't get. And that I, people also thought I was uh, very weird for. Um, for liking things that other people didn't. Anatomy. I don't know how many times people have called me a serial killer. <laughs> Which also, side note, having special interests that are about 
being a human person, like anatomy, biology, psychology, anthropology, learning more about humanity and being a, a human, those are also quite common in autistic people in general. Having these intense emotions is one of the reasons why autistic women can often be misdiagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And from what I have seen, that seems to be the number one misdiagnosis in autistic women. Perhaps that should be uh, its own point in itself. Oh, side note, another kind of little point that's not a point. If you are diagnosed with everything but autism, ADHD, borderline personality disorder, perhaps bipolar disorder, anxiety, depression, OCD, maybe a hoarding disorder, trichotillomania, if you have CPTSD, if you have rituals or obsessive thoughts, intrusive thoughts. If you're diagnosed with everything but autism, check out autism. Check out autism because doctors sometimes will also do that so you don't get the the negative connotation that is autism. Well, they can eat a dick. Along with that last point comes point number eight and that is that Autistic women will often explode when they are at home. And by explode, I mean release a bunch of emotions. Getting upset, getting angry. It can seem like they are a different person at school or out in public than they are when they are at home. Out in public, they are happy, they seem to have a good time. And then at home, it's like everything breaks down. They may spend a lot of time alone in their room at home, take a lot of naps or sleep a lot, but then also can have insomnia. Insomnia sucks as well. That's a thing too. This is the result of masking. This is what masking does. Masking is hard. It is exhausting. You are subconsciously or consciously analyzing everything that happens, every conversation, what people are wearing, how they're talking, how they're moving, what you're doing. You are trying to piece this life together. So many things don't make sense. People don't make sense. And they make sense to everyone but you. So you're trying super extra hard all day to do all of these things and also do the things you're supposed to do like school and work and your extracurricular activities, but you're still so immense in this world that doesn't make sense to you that when you're home and you're safe, you can let it all out. You can stop it for a bit. And your threshold's already up here because you've been having to deal with stuff all day. You've probably wanted to stim or wanted to have a meltdown or needed to, and you couldn't. You felt like you couldn't because you were masking because maybe you don't know that you're autistic and you do things and you're allowed to do things differently than other people. And so when you're home, you are so freaking sick of everything and everyone that one thing goes wrong, life is over. Frequent naps are also the result of masking. I had to have a nap every single day once I got home from school because life is exhausting. Honestly, masking or not, doing things is exhausting. You have to deal with so much more than everyone else all of the time. And it's quite hard. And it's not just a, oh, I had a long day today. Like I need to unwind, I need to relax. It's not relaxing. It's so sucky. And then not only that, but often you're alone in your room, losing your mind and you feel even worse about it because why am I losing my mind? What did I do wrong? Why are people mad at me? Why is my family not supporting me? Why am I so alone? Why am I the only person that does this is what it feels like. So if your daughter is coming home every day, having panic attacks, crying a lot, getting very angry, isolating herself, please don't leave her alone. Please don't let her do that by herself. What makes it worse is having to do it alone. Oof, talking about that brought back uh, too much that I didn't want it to. Anyway, moving on to point number nine, and this is to do with friendships. A lot of autistic women have a very hard time keeping friends. Making friends perhaps can be very easy because making friends is a very surface level, very shallow thing, but keeping them means that as you get comfortable, you then can start to unmask around them a little bit. And from personal experience, who I was masking as, whoever that bitch was, is very different to who I am. I made friends who would really like that mask. And that mask also was kind of an amalgamation of every person I ever thought was cool. An amalgamation of anyone who was popular, anyone who I thought was doing life well. So when it came to the popular girls, I was good with them for a while until I got comfortable and they became my friends. And then I was not that way. I was weird and I was isolated a lot. Having one or two very, very close friends and no one else is very common as well, or not belonging to a group of people, but being shallowly friends with everybody. But do any of them actually know you? No, babe, because you probably don't even know yourself. Listen, as an autistic woman who didn't get diagnosed till 15, I recognize that I am projecting a lot of things. So please take everything I say with a grain of salt. But also these are things that are known to be common autistic women traits. I just relate to them all way too personally. And especially when it comes to my adolescent years, a lot of this uh, hits real close to home. And I can remember how 
freaking lonely I felt and such a loser. If you are someone who's going through this right now, if I can give you any advice, hey, I'm 21 and I will tell you that those popular girls that I was masking to be like, a lot of them are actually my very close friends and they know the real me. And they are my very close friends because a lot of adolescents are trying to be cool and they were trying to be cool. And I stopped trying to be cool a long time ago. I am authentically weirdly myself. And every other human is a little authentic and weird themselves in a, in a in some kind of way. A lot of the times they don't express that as openly as I do, which means for me that the people that are close to me in my life and guys, if you're watching this, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of them have told me and I do believe it that they feel like they can be the most themselves around me. They're comfortable enough to find out. They're comfortable enough with being a little weird with branching out and finding things. My friends love my authenticity and in being okay with being different and being weird. And I think that honestly, that's what attracts some people to me. And honestly, if people are not attracted to that, if people think that I'm a weirdo, I'm at the point in my life where I'm like, that sounds like a you thing. <laughs> How you think of me is none of my business. People that are content and comfortable with who they are, don't feel the need to comment negatively on how someone else is. They don't feel the need to put others down. And so as much as it's wrong and stupid to hear someone call me names or whatever, I just wish them well. I wish them happiness and healing, maybe not to their face because they don't deserve that, but I know that for myself. So you'll find your people and you'll find them by being yourself. And this is my last autism and girls trait. This is trait number 10. And this is to do with having a very strong sense of justice, of right and wrong. Things are often very black and white. But by saying this, the right and wrong may not be uh, what everyone else perceives as right and wrong. Autistic people in general are often egocentric. Children are egocentric, but will learn and grow out of it a lot quicker than autistic human beings will. And egocentrism is different than egotistic Coalism? Egocentrism is the concept of believing that everything works from your perspective, that your perspective is the perspective that everyone has, that you are the maybe only reality that exists. It's not like a, a dismissal of other people's realities. You just don't even have that thought that there are others. It's, it's a weird, it's a very weird concept to grasp other people's point of views that are different than yours. And so you make up your own sense of justice, your own right and wrong. We can be very strict in that. When we think something is wrong, it's wrong and it will not be done. Why would we do something wrong ever? Often autistic women are very big rule followers. Goody two shoes might be a little square. This can also lead us to be quite judgmental of other humans. And it wasn't until I was 17 that I was called out on this by a therapist when my teacher made fun of me one day in class. And I said to my therapist, he is a bad man. That is a bad guy, bad teacher, bad guy. And she said, did you ever think that he's more than just one thing? You can be bad and good and Pretty much everyone is. And I was like, nope, that's a lie. You are one thing. Everything is black and white. Nope, turns out humans aren't. I still find myself being quite judgmental of things. And this isn't necessarily an insecurity within myself where I'm judging other people because I'm not super cozy with my own actions. Although sometimes it can be. Because sometimes when I'm judging someone else for what they are doing, I'm confirming to myself that my rules and the way that I think are correct. Also, I'm confirming to myself that I'm doing a good job. If I comment negatively or, or talk poorly on what someone else is doing and kind of label them entirely as a person, as that, that thing, I'm not taking the opportunity to learn more about the gray of the person. I'm taking that what I know is hard out of the question for me, where I don't have to do that, where I can give a rule to a person. That's a bad person. I don't talk to bad people, done. That's a lot easier than, wow, there could be 85,000 reasons as to why they're being this way. And there are a lot more things to this person than just that. There are a lot of things that I can do to move forward in the future. There are conversations I can have. There are ways that I can look back on myself and reflect. That is so many steps. That's tough. And our world is tough enough as it is. So limiting the amount of steps, especially with people in social interactions is um, very nice. So there you have it, my dudes. Those are 10 things that you can look for in autistic women. Do you know someone who's like this? Are they diagnosed with autism? Are you an autistic woman yourself and feel like this describes you? Oh, one other thing I wanna say, this is not just for women and it's not all that rigid. It's not for every woman. Not every autistic woman is going to be like this obviously. I will also say I'm using the phrase autism in girls or in women kind of uh, as a little <laughs> to my old video that I posted because back then I did not understand society near as much as I do now, which still is very little. But actually these traits are commonly found in humans that were socialized as girls at a young age. And so honestly, is it a biology thing that autistic 
women are going to be this way or are people who are born as a woman socialized in a way where this is how they become in order to survive their environment. I strongly think that a lot of things that define sex and gender, mostly gender, are social constructs. And we cannot say that that is a woman thing or that is a boy thing because we've not lived in a world where um, boys and girls are socialized the same. And I probably will not exist in that world. So I'll never really know. But I do know that a lot of envies and a lot of trans men who are autistic will agree with a lot of these points as I've seen it lots of times. So that is all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching again. Thank you for being here and thank you for learning. As always, I love you so much and I appreciate you so much. So I will say ta ta for now and I will see you guys next Friday. I can't wait to sit here and talk to you again. I love you. Have a great day. Mwah.